like an Atari 2600 system, please, and everything that goes with it. Everything? You sure you want everything? I want everything. Well, now you're getting your low price, up to $30 in rebate office, and a free pack. Is that everything? It's not everything. You can get nearly 300 different cartridges. 300? That's nothing. It's something. But it's not everything. Soon there'll be a voice module, a trackball, remote control joysticks, and a computer keyboard. It's amazing. It's amazing, but it's not everything. It's not everything. Soon there'll be educational games, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Using educational games as the main selling point for a system? Let's stop right there. Educational games may be a good tool for hooking in a reluctant learner, but only as an alternative to regular schoolwork. No kid in their right mind is going to willingly sit down at home to play one, and I, I can't blame them. Most educational games are very poorly designed, either technically or pedagogically, and in terms of fun and educational value, they rank only slightly above spelling out rude words on a calculator. Maybe I shouldn't be too hasty in writing off educational games. I remember having fun playing Mario's Time Machine when I was younger. But then again, I am a reclusive nerd with a Nintendo obsession and an enjoyment of learning. But even I walk at the idea of playing this, an Atari 2600 title that's designed to teach pre-reading skills. Well, at least it carries the good name of the Jim Henson workshop, from a time when he was still around to make sure it stayed a good name. It might not be too bad. Okay, so the premise of this game is matching letters to fuel a rocket ship. For example, I pick up an A here, so I need to find a port with an A on it. Oh look, there's one! Now the sharp height amongst you may have already spotted a teensy flaw here. The letters you have to carefully match are all the same. What is the point of this? A little internet hunting later, I track down the manual and find that this is a practice mode, which is actually a rather nice fort if it weren't for a few little points. First, in an Atari game, game number one should be your feature presentation, or at least a presentable presentation. It's the first impression you'll make on a player, so why waste it on a practice mode? Second, these modes are said to allow young children to get used to the mechanics of the game, which is a great sentiment. Too bad that the mechanics of the practice mode are completely different to those in the rest of the game. In any other mode, you move your little tractor ship freely, but just in the practice mode, you tap left or right, and the game locks you onto the next letter. Also, this is the only mode where the targets are stationary. You might say it's a way to gently introduce the controls, but I say it just develops control habits that will confuse young kids' fingers when they play the main modes. And finally, just to rub it in, there's a second practice mode where you can practice your skills at matching identical lowercase letters, completely different. Before I get any further, I should mention that this game supports the Atari Kids controller, that is, this giant block of blue plastic with a telephone keypad on the front. The nifty thing about this controller is that it can be customised for individual games by using these colourful overlay sheets. But for what game could a rectangular array of 12 buttons that can't be held comfortably be a good controller? Alpha Beam with Ernie only uses four of these buttons. Six moves you right, four moves you left, two shoots up, and eight shoots down. Simple enough, but couldn't you do all that with a regular joystick? This kid-friendly controller just introduces eight useless buttons to confuse you. And even though you only need four directional buttons, the game does not support regular controllers or joysticks. Your only alternative is the Atari keyboard controller, which is functionally the same. It's just smaller, stiffer, and not as blue. So, here I am, in space, matching letters to other letters. Though they don't really have to be letters, and this is a major issue for the game's educational credentials. The Sesame Street television show teaches the alphabet by emphasising the sound of a letter and how it's used, providing strong, contextualised foundations for reading skills. But this game offers none of that. As you match the letters by appearance alone, they could just as well be any meaningless collection of symbols. It's not until you hit mode 10 that things get real. In these later modes, your beam scoops up a copy of a letter and shifts the original along the alphabet. And you aren't given the letters you need straight up. You need to actually think, to plan the shortest possible route through the alphabet to pick up the letters you need. Now this is a bit more like it. At least it shows that letters are part of an ordered sequence. In fact, seeing whether your child can find the quickest way to gather the right letters is a good way to assess their knowledge of the alphabet, 
as well as testing out their skills in logic and planning. But does this game actually teach the alphabet? I don't think so. I doubt that a child who did not already know their ABCs inside out could pick them up through trial and error in this game. Most modes have two-player competitive variants, which is nice. There's even a few two-player exclusive cooperative modes where you have to team up with your partner and match letters on both sides of the rocket. The two-player mode 10 is particularly good for getting players to communicate and strategize together. I could even see this working as a party game, but perhaps the kind played when the clock is winding on to 2am. By now, we've certainly seen a lot of Alpha Beam, but, but where's Ernie? The in-game title just says Alpha Beam, so you might wonder if he even appears in the game. Well, once you fuel up your rocket, it shoots off to an alien planet and beams down... Ernie. Yep, that's him. That orange and blue smear down there. Well, it's a good thing Sesame Street encourages children to develop an imagination. Microscopic Ernie aside, this game has an appealing presentation. The beam effect, while a tad slow, looks and sounds better than any laser beam I've seen on the Atari, and that is a highly contested field. Also, just having a cutscene on technology this primitive is a real treat, as is the animated title sequence, and as much as I've maligned it, it's hard to think of a way this game's educational issues could be improved within the limitations of the Atari 2600. But while it is a well-developed game, there's just no denying that Alpha Beam with Ernie disappoints by offering a questionable amount of education and an even more questionable amount of Ernie. This episode of Random Encounters was brought to you by the letter a, and the number, 2600. Alpha Beam of Ernie is a production of the Children's Computer Workshop.